Robert Shedlock's under the 24th of May 2020. Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to my shed where I am talking about the Veritas Small Router Plane. I have not been sponsored by anybody. I bought some of my own money. I cut this a week ago and it's taken me nicely. Thank you for asking. So this is a uh, plane. I looked at I looked at Lai Nielsen and I also looked at antiques. Um, all the antiques fairly quickly because they are very hard to get replacement parts for. But you get a lot of replacement parts that they don't necessarily fit. Um, particular router planes, which are a bit of an oddball thing anyway. A router plane is a device, is a plane that works like a router, it cuts the thick bat. Yeah, well, it is a router, not like a router at all. It uses a, a plane instead of a, a rotary, like a rotary router, which has become the defective standard. Uh, these are what you use to cut grooves, um, dados, or rebates, um, housings, uh, and various decorative elements, and so on. They're also useful for tenons if you want to make sure your tenon is at a fixed height compared to a proper right angle. You just cut it to a fixed height based on the reference surface of the shoulder. So. This works two ways around, that's not particularly useful, but you have this blade and that can be like this as, a, as an inboard blade with a, a bridge in front of it. And that stops it tilting forward or, um, and you can also use it by just by taking it out, turn the assembly around and putting it in, you can use it as a, a bull nose. So really quite quick and easy to adjust. There's also a spring-loaded washer in there so that it doesn't fall out even when it's not fully adjusted, fully tightened down. Which is, I suppose, useful if you're adjusting the depth. You can get a depth stop, which is useful if you want to fix depth of, of work. And unlike all the other Veritas clamps, it clamps onto this round surface of the blade, which holds it nicely in place. Uh, I found the handles work pretty well. Um, it's only available in quarter inch, but that's pretty much all you need for most purposes because larger, larger holes you can do in a couple of passes instead of, instead of just one. Um, there's no uh, angle blade or anything for going against the grain, but this will cut a housing fairly comfortably as long as it's sharp. The downside is, unlike all the other Veritas in fact, the reason I bought this, I thought it was like the other, other Veritas planes. They all have a square edged blade, and you can adjust, take the top off uh, to put it onto a flat jig in order to sharpen it. Big, as opposed to sharpening it freehand. Whereas this, you have to sharpen over the edge of, the, of your sharpening block, and it's not that easy. You have to do it by hand, um, which I don't really like. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't have bought it if I'd known it was this blade. But that is better for the depth stop. So I'll give them that. Um, also, this spring loading happens by this uh, sprung washer. If you can see it between the metal blade, it's hard to focus on this, but between the metal uh, of the knob and the metal of the bit that holds the blade on, there's a little spring washer. This in here. Um, they gave me two of those, fake, and that caused uh, the whole thing to be a bit looser than it should have been. So my knob now has curling marks from when I jumped it up with a uh, pair of pliers. I'm still not convinced about the round blade being tight enough to use on a on a, um, a plane. I can't think of any other plane that has a round blade. You don't play it on the round blade, you play with the flat blade so it doesn't turn. Um, and I wish they'd have kept to that with the small plane, and I don't know why they didn't. Apart from keep it a manufacturer, I guess. Um, to be fair, it is a very cheap plane. It cost me £40 sterling uh, compared to the alternative. I originally started looking at a Palau plane, which would have cost about £175. Um, it's very well made, it's just 
of Moldlock Rare. I have no complaints about any of the manufacturers except that there are no holes for um, mounting a fence. It would have made life a lot easier when I was thinking of grooves with it. Veritas say you're not supposed to think grooves that is for fine detail products, not for cutting new grooves and things. But frankly, it's just a chisel and jig. You can you can do it, you just need a good um, good solid attachment for your your fence. Another point that I've realized is that you can lift up a like this so that it's well above the base, which means you can put it on anything and move it around quite happily. Wouldn't do that with most planes. So I'm about five mil away from the from the graves there, so I'm no damage to my hand, apart from what I've already done. Uh, so um, I would have preferred um, the medium plane. If I knew now, if I'd had the chance to use this before I bought it, I would have bought the medium plane. Uh, but it does work. And I'm, I will continue to use it. It's not worth buying the medium plane that I have the small plane. So I'm going to stick with this. Um, and yeah, let's see how I did at cutting a groove last week. I've got a very tough small router plane and I've attached a fence to it. Fence being an offcut of uh, the this 2x6 that the um, bench is made of. Uh, all I did was cut a little groove on the top, a rebate on the top for the, the same shape as the router plane, using the router plane. Um, and I've screwed it down. I've also planed that side, so it's, everything's very flush, and I should be able to just uh, cut a groove straight down there. Now, what I don't want to do is take a piece of wood, shove this in the end and start pushing because if I do that, I'll take a quarter of an inch off the end of this wood and that's going to run up and tear out a, a big V shape, ruining the sides of the groove. Um, so first thing I want to do is put this into the vise. Now, I don't put it like this because if I do, um, this is end the vise is unsupported, it'll rack and I'll end up with only holding it on this bit. So instead, I take a scrap piece of wood, the same thickness, half inch-ish, put it into the vise, and then I clump it into this dog. A dog in the dog hole, cut a piece of wood, go into the vise, and just clamping that up so that I don't have to worry about holding it. It's just not going to fall out or anything. I put the wood in the vise and close. Now, I'm actually going to start on the other side because there's a, a knot there. And it should be a little bit easier if I avoid the knot. Now, again, this is too deep at this point. If I had a depth stop, I'd set the depth stop, and that'll be that. But I do want to raise the, the blade. Now, I can't. I can't open this or close it by hand, because if I do, because this is a round shank on the blade, the blade moves off and veers to the side. So pliers to operate the turn screw. It's supposed to be hand tight, not supposed to be enough, but not for sinking a groove, it's not. Now I'm going to Actually, before I do anything else, I'm just going to lift, lift this up so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to place the uh, plane onto the wood, and hopefully, you can see that that's it. this fence is against this side of the wood, this fence is against this side of the wood, and this part and this part of the base of the frame are in contact with the wood. Push that down, push the blade down so that it's on top of the wood. Now if I screw it up there, it's just going to glide along the top. So I'm going to raise that by about an eighth of an inch. Raise the front piece by about an eighth of an inch, so that will raise the blade. If 
compared to the back by about a sixteenth of an inch. And just come up finger tight. That's finger tight I can get a proper clump on that. So we have the blade sitting slightly below the base. Uh, I have the blade parallel to the fence. Um, and it's tight enough that it shouldn't move. So I'm going to flatten this a little bit because I'm a bit wary of working at strange angles. And all I'm going to do now is cut out, cut out this end of the, the wood. I can go a bit deeper here because um, I only need this part of the plane in contact with the with the wood because this one's over, this bit's overhanging. So I might as well be using a bullnose plane for this, which gives me no control over depth. Um, so it gives me a nice deep cut at the end, which means I don't have to worry about going back and. Um, well, I don't have to worry about hitting the end at the speed and then tearing out. That's the idea when I come to the next pass. So, and I can now just simply drag. Being careful, I'm not, not planing entirely towards myself. Just pulling out a very thin groove. Just really to mark the position at this point. Okay, there I've got a bit of tear out. I'm just going to pull that out and keep going, pretend it didn't happen. For this particular job, tear out's not a big concern. As long as I've got most of the groove, it'll still work. If I dig a lot of tear out, I could plane it down, start again, or replace a piece of wood. When I first started this, I tried to plane um, about a two meter length of wood and sink a groove into the whole thing, then cut it lengthwise. And that kind of worked. But it wasn't ideal. I'm having I'm struggling a bit here because I've hit a knot. I can't even see the knot, it's just a dense piece of wood. There we go. Again, I've got a bit of tear out there. You can avoid the tear out completely by starting off with a marking gauge, marking the, the groove, then reinforcing the marking gauge with a chisel, then knocking that out and sinking it down with the chisel, and then just using the plane to finish it off. But that's far too much work for a job like this. I need this to be. Functional and as easy as possible, not a lot of work. Um, I'm worried about using chisels on the end side groove like this because if I make one mistake with a chisel, it's going to knock out the entire side, probably for some distance. Um, whereas this at least contains it to the right place. This is basically what you'll be doing, if, or I would be doing if I had a plow plane, except about a plow plane, it would have a built-in fence. There we go, so we've got that. Now I know I'm, I know I'm putting it towards me a little bit, but because of the, the fence, I know it can't come this way. So I'm actually going to hit the wall if I hit, hit anything. Plus, it's a lot less dangerous than, um, than a chisel. So, keep going.
I find it's a lot easier to push than pull. Also, you'll notice ignoring this handle on the plane because they really don't do very much. end bit to deal with. Now there's a, a big knot there so I'm going to, I'm going to attack that with a chisel before I do anything else. Right. Um, okay so let's just, let's just reinforce the walls. Well done, let's reinforce the walls over the knot. And hopefully you can see that. The two vertical lines cut out onto the knot and um, I'm going to, my first instinct is to grab a half inch chisel and then knock that out but I've actually got a half inch chisel in a jig so I'm going to use that on router blank. Ah, there we go. I'm guessing that this is the kind of place you might want to use a bullnose. <sighs> but, who knows. Probably not so I can tidy up a bit. There we go. So that's the initial groove. No, there's a bit sticking about there. Initial groove marked out all the way along. And I could actually use this if I wanted a groove that was only that deep. I guess you can see it now. I've done the initial groove, which is a little bit deeper than I expected to, but it's there. I now need to reset for a slightly deeper one. I should need only two or three passes to get the maybe four to get the full depth. So down a bit. And actually, I'm going to, given how deep this is, I'm going to go straight for pushing it along. So with any luck. chisel. Otherwise it's going to tear out even more. Let's uh, rest that from getting any worse. Especially with it being so close to the end of the wood. Of tear up quite, uh, quite strong grain here. I'm just going to mark the edge. A bit of tear out's okay because it'll still work, but I'd rather not avoid it if possible. That's just being pulled up by a bit of swarf on the Plane. Great. Let's 
more like it. Let's take out a I think I had a very generous step there. Now it's going. So yeah, I could do a better job with better, with better tools or with a little more care and preparation, but given that I've got uh, 14 small ones and 14 big ones to make, and this is. Uh, And this is a small one. This didn't quite seem worth it somehow. I just skip past that knot. Back up to it slowly, keeping the mouth clear. So it takes a little bit of elbow grease. As you can see, there's now a notch. It's that deep. I reckon that's probably actually good enough to work with. So I'm going to stop there. Um, previously, I've been using a slightly more incremental approach, but that's where we are. So I've got one more to do, and I'm going to do it off camera because that's full of knots, and I don't really fancy showing you more of me attacking knots with a chisel, uh, especially after I did that. So, that's all for notch building. And in fact, that's all for Shedlock this week. Uh, my powers of omnipresence, given that it's Tuesday. So, uh, ta-ta. Next week, I'll be reviewing the Tay Tools wheel marking gauge.